Hey, hello friends and welcome to this new Flutter tutorial and in this we're going to be creating a new browser app in Flutter. Well, it's going to be a simple browser app that's going to have uh, a, a place, a text field to put in the URL and uh, the URL that you put in and you press the go button and it's going to load that URL into the web view. So this is going to be a simple app, but uh, we're going to learn how to use the web view and how to show this loading sign as you load the URL in. For example, I have this uh, Retro Portal Studio uh, loaded up here on the YouTube. So as soon as I put in like um, Android.com and I press the go button, you can see that the site is loading and as the site completes up loading this loading sign is going to go away so we're going to achieve this functionality in this tutorial so uh, like one of my previous videos I'm just going to explain to you what I did here in this small app so that you don't have to watch me typing all this stuff out so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a simple flutter project that you can name anything I have named it flutter browser and uh, uh, for using this web view, that is the Flutter plugin, we're going to update the pubspec file. In the pubspec.yaml, I'm going to go in the dependencies. I'm going to add webview underscore Flutter. So uh, this is going to pick up the latest version of this package. So as soon as you add this, you need to uh, click the packages upgrade. I have already done this. So, uh, and one more thing, when you use this WebView Flutter, uh, sorry, uh, when you use this WebView Flutter package, uh, one thing that I've noticed is that we have clear text, clear text errors in Android, for Android, basically. So you also need to add this line here. In the, um, in the Android directory, right in the app folder, uh, in the source folder, and in the main folder, there there is the Android manifest file. And in the manifest file, right in the application tag, you need to add uses clear text traffic to true. Uh, there is some uh, error in the Android Studio. I don't know, like if I replay, if I just remove this line from here and I run this app. So I need to rerun the project for <laughs> for it not to work. So. Uh, Okay, so um, yeah, the app has restarted and you can see that there is the error, uh, clear text not permitted. So for covering up this issue, uh, you have to add this line here in the Android manifest file, uh, uses clear text traffic. And when you, sorry, when you close the app and run the app again, so we have this app uh, working here you can see that the app is loaded and we have added this your users clear text traffic so uh, and now I can just put in the URL youtube.com and it's gonna load that okay so this was just uh, the initialization part and now we come to the actual stuff we have this main dot dart file in the lib folder and we have this main method that is returning a material app that has a simple title although we're not going to show the title in the application but yeah, it's just a starting boilerplate code so we have this theme data that has primary swatch to blue uh, I'm going to set that to deep orange I just forgot to do that and we have this home page here so I'm keeping this home page as a stateful widget here because we need to uh, keep track of the state whether the page has loaded or not and if the page is not loaded yet we're going to show the loading sign that is the circular loading uh, symbol there or otherwise we're just going to hide that symbol so we need to maintain the state that i'm doing this here in the show uh, show loading boolean that is set to false initially and uh, uh, i'm going to explain you these things as we go through so we have this uh, my home page here and which is having a state of my home page state uh, for this my home page and right in the build method I have a simple scaffold and uh, which is having a simple container in the body and the container is parented by this safe area so uh, one thing that I need to explain here is that the safe area keeps the container from overlapping uh, from being overlapped by this status bar I'll show you what I mean. Uh, I'll just remove this.
for now and when I run the app now uh, without the safe area uh, let's just restart it you can see that the status bar is covering up this uh, uh, tab that we created uh, so uh, the, the status bar is covering this container that is in the scaffold so for pro, uh, for um, covering up this issue we need to uh, parent the container with a new widget that is uh, the safe area yeah and as soon as we add that <coughs> we can see that the, the problem is gone uh, yeah the problem is gone so okay so in the container we have a simple column that is going to contain this uh, this container and the web view so in the column uh, I have parented both uh, the container and the web view sorry container and the uh, web view that is in the stack with the flexible widget so what flexible does is it uh, uh, it makes our user interface responsive basically so um, when we parent a particular view with a flexible widget it takes in a flex property okay so uh, when we give it the flex property uh, you can see that I have given it a flex of 1 and we have given the uh, stack a flex of 9 so the total flex value is gonna be uh, 10 so what happens here is both the flexible objects under the same parent they get the total of the flex value that is 10 and uh, the widget which we have given the flex value of 1 will take 1 tenth of the space and the widget which we have given the value of flex 9 will take 9 parts of the space and 1 part of that space okay if, if that doesn't make any sense to you I'm just gonna link the flex tutorial uh, the official flex tutorial in the description below you can check that out uh, basically flex is just a simple widget to add responsiveness to your app so in the flex what we have is there is a container that is going to contain uh, this upper bar here we have a simple text view field here and a simple button and that is an icon button so I've also kept these three widgets uh, in their separate flexible parent because I want to keep uh, uh, this text view responsive with respect to both other widgets and so on so in the text view I've set the flex to 2 uh, in the text uh, fields we have set the flex to 4 and in the last widget that is the icon button we have set the flex to 1 so the total flex value is going to be um, six I guess and not seven I guess so uh, according to that all the widgets will take their space so uh, what else is there yeah I have a simple text field here that is having the autocorrect set to false with a simple style of input decoration and so on you can check the code on the github and uh, yeah that's just a simple code and yeah the text field is also having uh, a controller yeah the controller that is the te controller which i have initialized here the text editing controller this is going to keep track of what url the user has uh, entered into the text fields and we're going to use that url later on when we want to load the url into the web view so we have this simple text editing controller here we have also this icon button from which when we click on this button we're going to load the URL by taking the text in from the text controller. Okay, so let me take you to the web view first. So this is the widget that we're going to use to load the web page in. This widget is uh, provided to you by uh, the Flutter package that we added in the pubspec.yaml file. Uh, that is the web view Flutter package. And we have also imported that up here, the web view Flutter. And when we go back, yeah down here we have this web view which takes in an initial URL so you can notice that whenever I start the app again it has the default URL that is of the google.com that I have initialized here and uh, we uh, have to set the JavaScript mode to unrestricted so uh, with the JavaScript mode on we have this on web view created so the web, whenever the web view is created, that means it loads up initially the first time. It's going to give us a web view controller, which is going to help us control the URL that we're going to load again. It's going to give us a complete control of the web view. 
So we have this WebView controller initialized, uh, declared above here in the state level of the class. And uh, we're going to give this WebView a value once the WebView is created. So as soon as the WebView is created, we're going to take this WebView controller that, that is being passed and we're going to assign it to the WebView controller that is declared up here. So uh, yeah. Okay, so the other widget that we have is, is this circular progress indicator, okay? That is dependent upon this show loading boolean that we have declared up here, show loading. That is initially set to false because we uh, don't want to show anything at the starting. So uh, yeah, that, that was it for the web view, but uh, when we come up here in the icon button, so in the icon button, we're gonna check whenever the icon button is pressed, we're going to check that whether the text that user has entered contains this protocol here or not. And if the user hasn't entered this HTTPS value, then we're going to embed that in front of the URL or else the web view won't recognize what we're trying to do with this URL. Okay. So uh, this is just a small check and we we're going to check if the web view controller is not null. And if it is not null, then what we're going to do is we're going to update the loading state. So I have this small update loading method here that is declared up, up here. And we're going to update the state that is of the show loading. And according to this loading state, the US, uh, UI is going to update itself. So we set the loading state to true. That means we're going to initialize the loading of the URL. And as soon as the loading changes, we are going to set this WebView controller to load the URL that is the final URL that the user has just now entered and pressed the icon button. And as soon as the loading completes, we're going to check if we have received any error and uh, any error while loading. So we're going to update the loading state there also. So we're going to set it to false and so that the uh, circular progress indicator uh, uh, disappears from the screen. Okay, so we have this on page finish property here that is going to get uh, that is given to you by the web view, which indicates whether the page has finished loading or not. So we're going to update the uh, loading show loading boolean uh, to false here by setting the state and hence the uh, circular progress indicator disappears as soon as the page completes loading. So uh, just for the summary, we have uh, this home page here that has this three properties web view controller text editing controller and the show bo show loading boolean and we have this web view that takes an initial uh, that takes a initial url uh, a javascript mode and on web view created so as soon as the web view is created we're going to take this web view controller that is given to you by this property and we're going to assign it to the web view controller in the class level variable and uh, uh, if the show loading is true, we're going to show the pro uh, circular progress indicator or else we're just going to show an empty widget. So uh, both of these are in stack, obviously, because we want to show the circular loading on top of the web view. So uh, we also have this upper bar in the uh, flexes so that uh, uh, we have this HTTP text here and we have this uh, text field here in which the user can fill in the URL and we have this button that uh, when the user clicks loads up the URL that is just entered. So uh, as soon as the button is clicked we check whether the final URL contains the HTTPS that means the protocol and if there is no protocol we add that protocol to the uh, URL and then we check if the web view controller is not null and if it is, it is null, we don't do anything. And if the controller is not null, then we set the loading to true and we load up the site. And as soon as the loading completes, we're going to set the loading to false. So uh, this is all in a nutshell. This was just a basic tutorial teaching you how to do a simple web view uh, in Flutter. Just don't forget to add uh, the dependency and this uh, and to update this Android manifest file with the clear text traffic to true. So uh, this is going to be it for this tutorial. I hope you like this one. This is just a short tutorial. Um, if you have any questions, please post them in the comments and thank you all for your support. 
please press the like button and subscribe button if you get to learn anything from this tutorial and uh, uh, leave all your questions in the comments thank you all for watching see you next time peace